Good morning, church. Welcome to Ankeny United Church. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And I hope that this is a place and time of healing and wholeness for you. How are we all feeling this morning? Good. Some, some energetic, maybe others not so. Well, whatever you are feeling in this place, we are so happy that you are able to be with us in worship. I invite us all to take a deep breath together. Feel the presence of God in and amongst you, and let us join together to hear these words of welcome as we join in worship this morning. Good morning and welcome to Sunday Worship at Ankeny United Church of Christ, and for those watching at home at ankenyucc.org. We are a welcoming church family exploring progressive Christian theology, caring within and serving beyond. We are living, loving, and growing together. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are invited to walk with us this morning. And that means regardless of whether you are a visitor or a member or uncertain of your place in the world, you are welcome here. Whether you are renewed from the promise of the empty tomb or find yourself questioning alongside doubting Thomas, you are welcome here. Whether you find peace and quiet isolation or prefer the company of people around you, you are welcome here. No matter your family of origin or your family of choosing, you are welcome here. No matter who you love, you are welcome here. No matter your gender identity or if you don't identify with a gender at all, you are welcome here. No matter you or your family's ability or accessibility needs, you are welcome here. And of course, children of all ages and abilities are welcome as well, and we never mind a little noise or disruption in the service if that means there are sounds of life here. However, if you wish, there's a staff nursery should you need it. This is the worship of God at Ankeny United Church, and we are so glad that you are here. So at this time, I invite you to rise in body or in spirit to join me in this morning's call to worship. Our Easter story continues. Our celebration goes on. The miracle of Easter remains, renewing us with the gift of life. Our strength and our comforter inspires us, granting us faith when all we feel is doubt. Here in this place, our faith is renewed. Today is a beautiful day to worship God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I invite you to remain standing. Turn to hymn number 310 in your red hymnal or look up at the screen as we sing, He Lives.
At this time, I invite you now to turn to one another and let us pass the peace of Christ this morning. You may all be seated for our responsive reading of the Living Psalm. Look at how good and pleasing it is when families live together as one. It is like expensive oil poured over the head, running down onto Aaron's beard, which is extended over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew on Mount Hermon, streaming down onto the mountains of Zion, because it is there that the Lord has commanded the blessing of everlasting life. As we prepare now to enter into a time of worship where we lift up prayers for ourselves, our community, and our world, let us now join together as we sing our prayerful refrain. So as always, when we join together to lift up prayers for ourselves, our community, our world, we do so as a congregation so that we might all continue to lift up those in prayer that are named aloud. And so as prayers are lifted up, I say, Lord, in your mercy, and you respond with, hear our prayer. So I ask, what prayers do we have to share for the church on this day? Just a little update on Dennis's sister and her husband. They're hanging in there, both with cancer. And Sandy had another treatment, and from what I heard yesterday, she's feeling good. Uh, however, with Bill, he has two, well, tumors everywhere, basically, but the two tumors on the side of his stomach are really causing him a lot of pain. And they appreciate our prayers so much. And so, thank you, and uh, continued prayers for them. We lift up Sandy and Bill in the midst of this incredibly difficult time. They feel supported and loved, and that they know they are not alone in the midst of this heartbreaking ordeal. Lord, in your mercy. Other prayers this morning. I lift up prayers for uh, Tom and Sue, who uh, celebrated Sue's dad's life. Uh, it was delayed, uh, but his memorial service was held yesterday. So prayers for them and their family. Lord, in your mercy. Any other prayers? Then will you please join me in the spirit of prayer? Gracious God, we know that you hear the prayers that are spoken aloud. We know that you hear us even if we at times may have questions and doubts. But we understand that that is just all part of the human experience. That you remain with us at our side, guiding us, loving us, even when our faith falters, even when we turn away. Continue to remind us that your love is present with us in both 
the ups and the downs of life, that you continue to journey alongside us no matter how many roadblocks, obstacles, and detours our life's path may take. But God, we know that in addition to hearing those prayers that we have lifted aloud, we know that you also hear those prayers that are just too powerful to be spoken, the ones that rest quietly in our hearts. And so we take a moment of silence now to lift up those prayers that are too powerful to be named aloud. And God, knowing that you hear these prayers we bring before you today, we once more join together as a faith family to sing our prayerful refrain. And so as a faith family, we join together in whatever language, whatever tradition of our choosing, as together we pray that prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this And at this time, I'm going to invite all of the young people to come forward and join me for young person's time. Come on up and have a seat. <laughs> It's good to see you this morning. So have you ever had a friend tell you something that was just so outlandish that you knew it wasn't true? Do you remember what it was? Yeah, so maybe let's think, let's think of some other examples maybe. Um, a time that maybe your friend or someone had said something that you just, you just really thought couldn't possibly be true. Maybe, maybe that the moon was made of cheese. We know the moon's not made of cheese. Made of, made of crust. You think it's like a pizza moon or something? No. It looks like cheese, though, doesn't it? It kind of looks like Swiss cheese sometimes. Yeah. And 
What else have we ever, I'm trying to think of some other things that friends might have said to us in the past. That the sky is what? A rainbow. A rainbow? Well, we've, we've seen rainbows in the sky, but we know that that's all refraction, refractions of light in the air off of water molecules, yeah? Yeah, well, sometimes people say things and sometimes we think, you know what, that is just too ridiculous to be true. Well, what we have today is a story of one of Jesus' closest friends who heard some news about Jesus that he just possibly, he could not possibly believe it was true. No matter what his friends told him, saying that this happened, that this amazing thing had taken place, he told himself, you know what, I just can't believe it. I think you guys are trying to pull a fast one on me. But it turns out it was true. And that was one of the most miraculous things of all is that Thomas, one of Jesus' friends, was able to see Jesus again after Jesus had died with his own eyes. So I want you to think, and as you hear the story today about Thomas, I want you to think about those times maybe you've had some doubts as well. And doubting isn't necessarily a bad thing, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. So we're going to do our special prayer. You remember how it goes. We put our hands forward, and we say, let us pray. Lord Jesus, be with us every day and help us grow in every way. Amen. Thank you.
The scripture reading is from Acts chapter 4, 32 through 35. The community of believers was one in heart and mind. None of them would say, this is mine, about any of their possessions, but held everything in common. The apostles continued to bear powerful witness to the res resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and an abundance of grace was at work among them all. There were no needy persons among them. Those who owned properties or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds from the sales, and place them in the care and under the authority of the apostles. Then it was distributed to anyone who was in need. The reading from John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then his disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Will you please join me in the spirit of prayer? Holy Word, Holy Wisdom, be in our hearts, in our understanding, and in our actions on this day. Amen. Seeing is believing. It's a common adage that we hear, right? For some reason, out of all of our senses, we tend to value and trust what our eyes see over everything else more than we trust what we hear, what we feel, smell, or taste, our vision is often the most valued among our senses. And that, at its heart, is the foundation of this well-known story about doubting Thomas. See, Thomas had heard what the other disciples had said, that Jesus was alive, had risen from the dead, that he was physically there with them, but he didn't trust what he was hearing. In his heart, he had felt the spring of hope blossom that maybe, just maybe, this miraculous event had come to pass. But still, still, that wasn't enough. Instead, Thomas takes a firm stance. He draws his line in the sand, one that so many of us hold on to today, that seeing is believing. Now, for the record... I'm going to talk a little bit about Thomas here, but I, t I take a different approach with Thomas and his role of doubt in the podcast I released this past week, that doubt actually is an important thing for us as human beings, that it serves as sort of the immune system of the soul. It keeps us from becoming mindless, unquestioning followers of whatever we are told. So if you want that perspective, you can listen to my episode early on this week. But, but I want to take a different approach today. Focusing and recognizing that even though we place so much trust and faith in our sight, even what we 
see can deceive us at times. Even our eyes can deceive us. As with most things in life, we tend to see whatever it is we want to see. And truth be told, when we see one thing, chances are we are missing out on so much more, on a much larger picture. By putting so much priority on visual evidence, we lose out on the holistic nature of the human existence. Because what we see can be manipulated. And maybe, maybe that's why this story is placed where it is immediately after the story of the resurrection. Because it reminds us why it is so important for us to have faith, even when we don't see what we had originally expected. So I wanted to do some practical examples this morning, right? Let's, the fact that sometimes seeing isn't necessarily believing. So I have some images that I want to show you this morning. And so if we can move to the first image that we have. This is a classic. I'm sure you've seen this before. When you look at this image, chances are you see one of two things. You either see an old woman or you see a young woman looking away. How many saw the young woman first? Most of you, right? How many about the old woman? A handful, okay, right? The truth is that both are here. What matters is what you focus on, what your perspective is, where you put your attention. Let, let's try the next one. When you look at this, the artist did a beautiful job here. You might see an old man at first, but when you look closer, you obviously see a horse, someone on horseback, and someone by a river. The same artist, I believe, did the next one. Let's look at the next one here. This one has a lot within it. And for a while, and truth be told, when I first looked at this picture, I didn't even notice the candlestick in the middle for the longest time. I was so focused on the painting of the old people and the people in the depths. The problem is that our world is a lot like these illusions. There's so many intricate parts that make up the whole. But too often we stop immediately at the surface at the first thing we see content to believe that the first thing that we see is the only thing that matters. But life tells us that that's not the case. Let's try a different type of perspective out. Can you do the next one? Maybe you've seen these sorts of illusions before. These are perspective pieces. Artists will paint, in this case, this is a chalk drawing. They will chalk draw on the ground and do it in such a way that if you are standing in one particular spot, an optical illusion comes in to, to focus. It is a powerful and disorienting image. There's another example as well, if you move on to the next one. Standing from anywhere else, right? the image doesn't work. It's only when you shift your stance, when you stand from a specific place, does everything come together. Now, with all these pictures, it isn't that what we aren't seeing isn't before us, but rather that what we are seeing requires us to take a specific stance, a specific perspective. And to move beyond the surface of what we see, it requires us to change our focus. And in fact, it is precisely the shift of focus that Thomas experiences in our text today. You can change to the next image of Thomas. See, we often criticize Thomas for doubting, for not having faith, but quite honestly, I think Thomas gets a bad rap. Our scripture tells us that when Jesus first appears to the disciples, he voluntarily shows him his hands and his side without them even being prompted to ask, as though Jesus knows that that is what is required for them to believe. But Thomas not being there has been labeled for the rest of time as doubting Thomas because he had the audacity to question. But the reality is that we are all doubting Thomases, even if we don't know it. And the story of Thomas is a powerful reminder to us that, that faith is hard. 
It is hard to have faith in something that can seem to elude us. But it is precisely why having faith is so important. See, Thomas was so dependent upon his sight that he had to see to believe that he lost out on the holistic nature of what faith has to offer because faith engages all of us wholly. It engages the heart, the soul, the body, and the mind. But Thomas and so many of us today stop short of that, believing that only what our eyes can see matters, rather than embracing what we know and feel to be true deep in our hearts. So by seeing Jesus with his own eyes, Thomas was forced to shift his perspective. In fact, his entire worldview changed. All of a sudden, miraculous new possibilities awaited. Because so much of Thomas' faith had been dependent upon what he had seen, he had experienced so much. And when we place ourselves in Thomas's shoes, it's not hard to understand why he had so many doubts. Because what he had seen taken place over the course of a week, right? He had seen Jesus die with his own eyes. He had witnessed the most important person in his life die in front of him. He had seen how the people who had ushered him into the city of Jerusalem with palm branches waving, shouting Hosanna, how they had turned on him. He had seen one of his brothers, Judas, betray Jesus. He was there when they laid him in the tomb. He had seen this with his own eyes. But now he had to shift focus. He was called to see past that death to witness something far more beautiful. By seeing Jesus appear before him, by putting his hands and fingers in his wounds, the way that he saw the world was forever changed. Its faith was forever changed. The reality is that we need a shift of focus in our own lives too. Just imagine, what if we lived in a world where we truly believed that nothing was impossible? How would that change the way that we looked at the world around us? What if we witnessed every creature every plant, animal, and person as the living miracle that they really are. How would this world be different? How would we treat one another differently? And trust me, life on this planet is a statistical miracle. We need to shift our focus alongside Thomas. We, like Thomas, need to look past the death and destruction that surrounds us to witness the miracle of love and life that is around us every day. We need to move past that adage of seeing is believing and work to recapture the beauty of what it means to have faith in this world. I think that's part of the beauty of the Easter message and why they put Thomas' story immediately after this. Because we know we know every day we are reminded that this world is filled with darkness. You turn on the television, you, you look at the news, and within seconds you are reminded that this world is filled with war, violence, division, and hatred. It is all around us in various forms, and it can feel suffocating and overwhelming. But we have to remember there is also love and light, and joy, and peace around us as well. And while it is easier for us to see the pain and darkness in our world, if we stop and take stock of what is around us, if we focus on the good, we see that we are surrounded by light and love each and every day. My friends, God didn't just give us eyes to see. God gave us hands to feel, ears to hear, tongues to taste, noses to smell, and hearts to hope. Thomas learned that faith isn't just about what we see. It is so much more. So let us not just trust in what our eyes see, but embrace what it means to have 
Let us celebrate the good news that we have heard that seems too good to be true, that, that love in life is stronger than death. That hatred and fear are not the most powerful forces in the world today. Let us feel deep within us that wellspring of joy that comes from deep within us. That love and life has been given to us all. So as we move forward into our year, I invite us to keep that Easter message at heart. The empty tomb is behind us, but now, now the real work begins. So let us look at our world in a new way as we continue to have faith. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so, my friends, on this day, I continue once again to say that indeed God is good. And all the time, let us share the goodness of our God.
Will you please join with me as we dedicate this morning's offering? Let us pray. For the breath of life, for eyes to see, for insight to believe, for courage to witness, we give you thanks, O oh Lord. May this offering be a witness to your grace and peace. May your spirit be a transformative power that inspires us and enables us to do your work of love and justice in the world. Amen. And as we enter into this time of sacred communion, I invite you to join me in our prayer of confession and assurance of pardon. Let us pray. God of our ancestors, too often we are ruled by our fears rather than by our faith. Forgive our misuse of the precious days you have entrusted to us. Help us to see the signs of your presence around us so that we may be living witnesses of your light and love in our world. Yet we know that even when our faith falters, you have never once left our side. As we continue to live by faith, we give you our unending thanks. Amen. As we prepare for this time of communion, let us join together to sing hymn number 488 in your black hymnal, Be Still My Soul.
please be seated. At this table at Ankeny UCC, you are welcome no matter your church affiliation, no matter whether or not you are a member or visitor, you are welcome at this table. When we share in the sacrament of communion, you will have an option of regular bread or gluten-free bread, and the lighter colored cups are wine, and the darker colored cups are grape juice, so you may have your choice. My friends, the news that Thomas heard was too good to be true. So much had happened in such a short time. A week ago, Jesus had gathered around the table with his friends, and later he would be betrayed by one of their own. He had been arrested and crucified, and now, now he was back from the dead. It was almost too much to handle. But I'd like to imagine that as they sat together, that Thomas thought back to the last meal that they shared with Jesus, that communion that they had in that upper room. There, Jesus had given them a task that whenever you gather together, whenever you partake in the most basic things of life, bread and wine, that we should remember him. Remember him, his message, and his love. A love that we still carry as we gather around his table today. So at this time, I invite you to join me in that great prayer of thanksgiving. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God most high. Now make this bread and this cup a sign for us to your continued presence within and amongst us. Holy, 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 God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus gathered around the table with his friends, the disciples. And at that meal, he took a piece of bread, and after giving thanks for it, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, take and eat. This is my body that is broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. In the same manner, when the meal was finished, he took the cup, and after giving thanks for it, he blessed it. He poured it out and he gave it to them, saying, take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant that has been poured out for you. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. My friends, through the breaking of this bread and through the pouring of this cup, God comes closer to us so that we in turn might grow closer to God. Come to this table as you are, for all things have been made ready. Bread of life for you, and the cup of blessing. The bread of life for you, and the cup of blessing.
Will you please join me as together we pray our prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. At this table, we have been transformed through God's radical and unconditional love. May we go forth from this place to live authentic lives, fueled by God's love. Amen. As we end our time together, I invite you to rise if you are able in body or in spirit for our ascending hymn, number 249 in your black hymnals, Peace I Leave With You, My Friends.
please be seated for our commissioning. While others come up, uh, I want to let you know that there is a bunch of sign-up sheets out on the bulletin board. Uh, on April 28th, we are hosting both the Asso Central Iowa Association general meeting uh, at 3 o'clock, followed by my installation service. So then I'll actually officially be your pastor, believe it or not. Um, there's a sign-up sheet out there for if you are willing to bring a dish for sort of a potluck-style meal following the installation service. Uh, that's out there. There's also a sign-up sheet for greeters and for those if you want to host fellowship hour. It's pretty simple. Uh, that is out on the bulletin board as well. And we are going to be starting up our book club, and there's a sign-up sheet if you are interested in learning more about that or wanting to be part of that. Uh, and then the last thing for me, because I know we have others, is that uh, I'm going to be on vacation this next week. I will be in the area, so if something comes up, feel free to reach out. But just so you know, I won't be in the office. So other announcements, things, please come forward. Yeah, I can hear your mind's ticking already. Okay, what does she want for Christian Ed now? <laughs> <laughs> um, we've decided we're going to try to do a little more formal um, encouragement to try to get people to share in with our um, leading of Sunday school classes in the next fall into the next year. Um, and one of the things we want to do is we want to invite anyone who might be interested to come in and sit in on one of the classes just to see that the preparation isn't really time consuming. Um, our lessons are fully set up easily to follow for the instructors and just to see how much fun it actually is once you get there um, and set up. I'll agree that once in a while when I have to get up earlier on Sunday morning to get here for Sunday school, I'm kind of dragging until I walk in the door and see the kids. Um, but that's <laughs> fun and um, it's just good time. It's a good learning experience. Uh, some of the things I learn about Bible stories that maybe I never knew or just I've forgotten <laughs> over 70 some years. Um, um, that could be part of it, um, but I strongly encourage anyone that even thinks you want to take part, and remember you can be a sub, do it one Sunday out of a month, whatever, uh, cover for people. If you want to do it just a month at a time or however you'd like to participate, it's well worth your while, and like I said, we strongly encourage you to stop by and just drop in on the classes and just see how it goes and see the, the excitement that you can spur in there. Thanks. And the kids aren't nearly as scary as they might appear, so don't worry about that. And are, the, uh, is, are we doing porch light after worship for the older kids today? Yes. Yes, good. So uh, our high school older kids, we meet at porch light for some coffee and conversation as well. So Inkeny Centennial High School has their spring musical in two weekends from now. So not this one, but the 19th, 20th, and 21st. Um, they are doing The Little Mermaid, which is a lot of fun. It's $15 adults, $10 students. Um, if anyone would like to meet me there on Saturday night, um, it starts at 7. Be there 15, 20 minutes early so we can, you know, meet up and sit together. It's general admission, so we can just go find seats then, and you can pay at the theater itself that night. So, yes, yeah, Saturday night, the 20th, about 640, 645 we meet. I might send out an email, too, just so I can have a head count of Perfect. who to wait for. Yeah, Which that's great. Thanks. Lovely. Any other announcements for the good of the church this morning? Yeah, come on up. Hey, guys. I'm also going to be talking about a musical. Um, Bondurant for ours um, musicals actually this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, Friday and Saturday at 7, Sunday at 2. Tickets are $5 for the second the upper rows and 10 for the front. Um, and yeah, we would really appreciate if you guys would want to stop by. We That's you know how we get a lot of our funding for the program. Um, and it's going to be super cool and super fun. And if you want to just see some talented people, uh, definitely stop by. It's going to be a fun time. What's the show? It's called Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. So come check it out. It's going to be a, a fun time. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday, and, yeah, Friday, Saturday. Lovely. <laughs> That's an important piece. Oh, my goodness. Hopefully, maybe we can send out an email with that information as well. Uh, lovely. Anything else? Then let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
knowing that through faith, through doubt, through it all, God is with us and has never once left our side. Let us go in peace. Amen.